Blue Collar Hustlers Nationwide, welcome to the Backwoods Mechanic Channel. Now today we're going to talk a little bit about tools and we're going to have a little bitty tool haul, so let's get to it. Some of the tools you're going to see in this video is not intended to be the best quality tools in the world. That's because I'm called to a lot of different locations to do a lot of different repairs. A lot of these tools that I'm going to be buying, I'm going to start leaving on site in little itty bitty toolboxes. That way, it's coming in to do a simple repair. I ain't going to unload my go box and take it out of the service van and all that sort of stuff. Go in and make these repairs. I can simply walk in, have a box there on site, get a bunch of cheap tools to go do the job with that I need to do, collect my paycheck, go on about my day. Some of the tools in this video is going to be those types of tools. It's going to be the kind of tools that I'm buying specifically to leave on site community toolbox tool public access tool owner tools tools that's not going to break my heart if I walk off the job site now of course I'm doing a variety of different repairs now and I'm venturing off different trades some of the other tools in this video is also going to match different trades that I'm starting to venture into you see I'm trying to expand my blue collar portfolio in order for me to do that I want to have to start buying some tools to take with me to do a variety of different jobs with so that's some of the tools you're also going to see as well so whenever I'm buying these tools often I open them straight up and take them straight to the job site and go to work which means I can't make a video so what I've done is when I pick these things up and make a short little video about them talk about them a little bit and I put the tool straight to work I can make videos like this where I can take three or four of those different videos, tie them all together, and produce one video for you to check out in the tool haul. See these tools in action? Make sure you check out these social media platforms. Otherwise, pop the clutch on that subscribe button and enjoy. I don't always want to have to go to a job site, pop the trunk of my van, all that sort of stuff, start grabbing out a bunch of tools, walking in, walking out of the facility 200 different times. So, of course, pick myself up a utility cart. The utility cart's also going to be problematic because it's a big, heavy duty thing. You're going to leave it on site most of the time, and whenever I leave it on site, I'll take it out to the van. I'll get what tools I need. I'll take it back in the build and I'll go up to the floors I'm working on, whatever the case may be. There are often certain situations you get yourself a mobile tool cart, exactly what I was looking at whenever I started looking into these modular storage systems. Of course, there's a bunch of them out here for you to choose from. Milwaukee is definitely one of the best you can choose from on the market. No questions asked about that. Problem is, if you go to invest in the stack system by Milwaukee, you've got to have a Home Depot nearby, and I ain't got one for a two hour drive away from me. The closest store to me that sells any type of Milwaukee tool is going to be Royal King. But they do not have a full stock of Milwaukee options. I'll tell you right now, you're going to buy that kit, you're going to have to really look at it hard. Decide how bad you want it. Now, a lot of people out here don't care about spending money, but I do. Looking at the rigid line, I was like, man, that rigid line, it looks appealing. I love how they design it. You can hang it on the wall, you can stack it, you can pack it, you can do whatever you want to do with it. Rigid line looks sexy, let me tell you. Black and orange, like rigid tools. It is what it is. Once again, there ain't no damn Home Depot near me. It was out the question. And then Ryobi, you start looking at Ryobi, of course, they got a decent little system, but I really don't want Ryobi. I go down to my local Lowe's and they didn't have the cobalt storage system at the time. So I start looking at the other options in the area. They got Craftsman, which ain't too bad actually. They got Dewalt, another one that ain't too bad. Craftsman didn't have a full selection of items for me to choose from and neither did Dewalt. In fact, Royal King had more Dewalt stuff than what any of the other stores did. Whenever I went down to Walmart and I was like, you know what, let's see what they got in the heart stack system. That's whenever I looked at what they had. And long bold, that's what I ended up walking out with because the simple facts are this. I didn't need something that was going to be the most durable just to take with me on the go back and forth, up and down travel around. If I get into more extensive heavy duty work, I'll probably look into the Flex system. Flex, I tell you right now, it looks like it's got the best one on the market bar none to be able to rival against Milwaukee tools. Price point on them are great, and quite frankly, I think Cobalt is made by the exact same company that makes Flex. If it come down to it, for whatever reason, I went with Hart. Cheaper, of course, it's smaller, more compact, not built nearly as durable, but it did give me enough stuff to get me started. So that right there is what I picked up. I will have a video coming out on it very soon, following actual review of its performance to this point in time. Now let's move on to the next one up this hyper tough sledgehammer this thing was pretty cheap i mean it's got a fiberglass handle it's meant to beat stuff and it's going to hold up perfectly fine for what i need to use it for also got a tiny little atd ball peen hammer here pick this up at car quest you know you can always use these tiny ball peen hammers whenever you're uh, you know working on brake calibers things like that to come in handy eight ounce ball peen head another one from car quest here this one only cost me like five bucks i think it was got this one and another one with it miniature sledgehammer basically great for automotive repairs they it works this little electrical kit here from gardner bender you know this thing was like 12 bucks i think it was gives you a variety of different things that you could use and obviously that's why i picked it up because it's a decent price and i needed a few things out of it it was there on the spot to buy so i got it gardner bender actually isn't too bad of a name brand and these are basically common wire strippers you can get them wide variety of locations don't necessarily have to be gardner bender but get some wire nuts connectors and all that sort of stuff gets you going plus a wire stripper and i picked up this brake tool 
this is for your spring go use them on your rear drum brakes this is my performance tool sometimes you can find these sometimes you can just really depends on the automotive world near you and what they got in store this ain't a bad tool it's actually a pretty good tool of course here's your old school style right here that you can use variety of other ones in here in the box i just like buying tools a few extra screwdrivers here and there i replaced my old craftsman when that thing disappeared so i got that brand new it's made in taiwan plus two other new ones here from gear Rent. and i picked this up a few weeks back it's basic 16 ounce hammer by stanley and of course i need a decent wire stripper you don't want to go with the cheapest of the cheap i could have if i wanted to but whenever i'm getting called out to do repairs i would rather have something halfway decent so i chose to go with Irwin. the thing that i picked up was this beautiful 2.4 foot extension right here the way if you're painting on something you need to hit the ceilings and all that sort of stuff you just strap it on what i love about this is it's not wood on the end of it as you can see it's aluminum right there it's got that little rubber neck on the bottom of it to kind of help keep things nice and secure the push button design right here hexagonal shaft that way it doesn't easily bend or break it's really easy to maneuver you flip it over hit that button right there you go anytime you're sitting here working with it all you got to do is depress that button once again pops down till it locks into place really good tool to have on site if you're doing a lot of painting I do prefer better brands, but this one honestly ain't too bad. This cobalt kneeling pad, anytime you gotta get on your knees and work underneath sinks, countertops, cars, don't matter what it is, these things are gonna be comfortable. This tool here I picked up a few weeks back. It's Superior Tool, made right here in the USA. Cast aluminum. It is called the Basin Buddy by Superior Tool. And it'll only cost you about $20 at your local Lowe's. This thing is a spectacular tool to have. Now, whenever you first get this, it basically comes with this socket right here the basin buddy itself and a three-eighths to quarter inch adapter that you stick inside here so i just eliminated the three-eighths to quarter inch adapter and basically stuck whatever i needed to to adapt it to the socket anything quarter inch drive will fit inside here so if you've got adapters with your screwdrivers you see there on screen this has been in a video that i released here recently showing this particular tool in action i adapted things to my michael pro ratcheting screwdriver and i tell you what it might life 10 times easier than what it would be using a regular old basin wrench hook these things up to extensions like so if you got big long extensions you adapt it to it you get straight on the fasteners underneath sinks bullet tank fasteners a variety of other plumbing fixtures this tool will help you get that job done think of the possibilities you hook a quarter inch drive extension to it got a spinner handle you can hook to it ratchet you can hook to it thumb wheel ratchet whatever the case is that's basically what the name of the game is having the right tool for the job or at least having the tool for the job it's going to make your life easier get the job done faster you get it done right the more money you can make a set of tools i picked up here which you can also see in the video link down below a set of v jaw tongue and groove pliers it's the barn star brand cost me about 10 bucks got these things to leave on site they're nice cheap to the point we'll see how well they do in the future got the 10 and 12 inch sizes which are the ones you'll use the most for a variety of different plumbing jobs however there is going to be certain times that you're going to need this little plier right here this is the six inch by channel lock love these tools a few of them i'm going to continue to use them like i said channel lock is a tool that i prefer to use it's a tool of the trades that everybody uses i don't care what trade you're in somebody's got some channel lock pliers they're an iconic brand that's why i don't want to leave this particular set on the job site as small as they are six inches in length somebody's going to put them in their pocket they're going to grow legs they're going to walk off i didn't want that to happen so i decided while i was buying some cheap pliers i would go back to buying a brand that i've used in the past which is hyper tough the hyper tough isn't too bad for what you're paying for i actually think the quality on these are a little bit better than what you can get in the pittsburgh line as you see here it's the hyper tough groove joint six inch pliers it does come with a five-year limited warranty you'll have to keep your receipt of course if you want to warranty it out of your local walmart well, jaw capacity ergonomic soft grip handle yes it is made in china i have used a lot of the hyper tough stuff in the past and i preferred checking it out as opposed to checking out the harbor freight brands because there's already a thousand people out here reviewing harbor freight tools i mean that they're bad tools it just means i wanted to do something a little bit different that's why i like testing out brands like the real work tool line barn star line or even the hyper tough line because these are the cheap of the cheap people buy these they want to know if they're going to work for a basic do-it-yourself function sometimes they're a one and done function you're going to use them one time they'll break you're done with them but the fact that they're actually manufacturing these at walmart now with a five-year limited warranty says something about them i've had the pittsburgh line i donated them i've had the hyper tough adjustable wrenches which i donated to a local small business i trained some people to help work in their maintenance department 
I actually helped create the maintenance department for them. I gave them a list of what they needed to do, all that sort of stuff. I bought them a toolbox. I bought them a bunch of these cheap tools and I donated them to them. If adjustable wrenches wasn't entirely too bad, you can check out some of the original videos down below. First of this, I ain't gonna expect these to hold a lot of leverage. Come on, people. They're six inches long. They're not meant to take lug nuts off cars. They're not meant to break unions off a of steam pipe. It's not gonna happen. When you buy a pair of six inch pliers like this, if I want something of good quality, I'm gonna have these channel locks on hand. But these right here is gonna do the job that I need them to do. They're nice. They're small. They're compact. They got a big wide jaw on them. I can get them in a variety of locations. And the reason that you buy pliers like this is because handles don't always fit where you want them to. You got yourself a nice eight or 10 inch pair of pliers. They're not always gonna reach around water lines or steam lines, air lines, whatever it is that you're working on. Sometimes you're gonna have to have something that's a little bit more compact with the wide jaw capacity to fit around something. That's what these are for. Grips on these aren't too bad actually. Now going by the feel of them, these big thick comfort grips you can't complain about. Fastener style right here in the center to combine the two jaws or selections for that tongue and groove adjustment. Now the teeth on these things aren't too bad. They'll grip everything. I need them to grip and they'll do everything I need them to do. Let's see how these things last compared to other brands, how well they'll perform out here in the field doing a variety of different maintenance style work. A good close comparison between made in the USA and made in China. These are both six inches in length. You can clearly see the thickness of the head on this thing from Hyper Tough compared to the one made here in the USA. Side by side, right there you go. Cheap Chinese steel. They had to compensate for the weak steel by making a thicker product. That's what you get when you buy China. But like I said, this is what we're going to be buying to put in the toolbox to leave on site for grabbing go situations only. It's not something I'm going to absolutely depend on. I've got all the tools that I need to do a much better job if I need them. Moving on. I've been doing a little bit of painting so I decided I'd go pick me up some Val Spar and get some painting done. Picked up a few basic cheap paint brushes, stuff like that because I've been doing a lot of painting as of late. I think it's like a buck twenty-five for this. It'll get the job done at least. I'm also installing a new door for a client later and I picked this thing up at a flea market. It's only like three dollars and you damn sure can't beat that for what I got in this set. It's the whole saw kit from Dewalt. So I've been doing a variety of detail work. I've had to slowly build up my chemicals and all that kind of stuff because a lot of that stuff was stolen when I was robbed back in December. But uh, you got to start somewhere and I always like using the chemical guys. I mean they really do got some pretty good products. It's all about knowing how to use them and having the right tools to use for the job and the stain that you're treating. also picked up some paint guides because you know as you can imagine doing this remodeling work whenever you're going around brand new cabinets like I'm getting ready to install. If you was to have to go around the edges of them the last thing you want to do is paint your brand new cabinets. Having these paint guides is always handy. You can pick them up at a variety of locations. I got this one and a smaller one both at Lowe's. The one I picked up from Harbor Freight's not too bad and it's like a dollar whenever I got it. Excellent tool for the price point of one dollar I just tell you. Another thing I highly recommend if you got textured ceilings. Now these ceilings that I'm dealing with right here you probably see a little bit better right there. These textured ceilings, if you take a regular nap roll over top of them, it's not going to paint them worth a damn. I recommend getting the Colossal Nap. If you get the Colossal Nap, which they got down there at Lowe's by Purdy, the thing is going to do you wonders. It's not too bad to use the Colossal Roller on the walls, on flat surfaces, on textured surfaces. It works just as good. In my experience, it depends on what you're doing, what kind of paint you're using for the job, what you're painting. And one of the best things that you can get from Purdy is this brush and roller cleaner. Essentially, it's what people refer to as a painter's comb. Whenever you're done painting something, you can easily clean your naps, whether it's small naps, large naps. Plus, you've got a comb feature on this thing, so whenever you're done using your paintbrush, you can clean out that paintbrush real good and use it time and time again. I like using the same brushes over and over again, getting as much use out of them as possible. That way, it saves me money. If you have the right tool for the job, you can easily do that. For automotive purposes, having a double-end scribe by Lyle is a spectacular tool to have because you can use it for a variety of different things, O-rings and all that sort of stuff. You can also use this exact same tool out here in the trades. Because there is O-ring seat seals on faucets, you might be able to rebuild a delta. Might even be cleaning out a drain. Things will reach right down in there and help pull whatever gunk's in the drain out of the drain. Always a good reason to have a Lyle tool. That's a lot of what I do means I need utility knives, so I picked up a brand new one from Crescent slash Weiss. These things are spectacular tools. I think I got three of these now. Now whenever I'm doing these remodeling jobs, as you can tell I'm doing right now, I put all brand new shelves up. So whenever I put these wire shelves up and putting anchors in. I measure everything up. Generally, I like using this brand new Hyper Tough yardstick. By the way, this is made in the USA. If you like American made tools, right there you go. But I'll start here at the bottom and I'll go about two foot up. I'll make me a mark and then after that, I'll go 13 inches up on each one. I'll just set that
that thing up on the anchors and keep going up until I got the shelves that I want in here and everything's evenly spaced. Now hopefully you all like this sort of video. I don't do many of these videos, but I'm trying to change things up and I'm trying to squeeze a few things in. That way I can showcase what I've got, what I'm doing. You can see some tools, we can talk about them, and I can keep right on moving along. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Make sure you hit that like button. That does a lot for this channel. And as always, up the clutch on that subscribe button. Keep doing that blue collar hustle.